think that's a hammer. Yeah. Well, that, that so. definitely needs to be a cautionary tale to all of our agents that are in escrow to, hey, call your lenders. Let's have that, let's have that conversation right now instead of uh, two days before closing, right, Jody? Right, absolutely. If you've got FHA and VA buyers or any buyers, I would be picking up the phone and calling the lender and asking if they've changed the criteria. Um, who do we have sitting on the fence that may no longer qualify? Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good Wednesday morning. Everyone doing okay? Other than Anya, Anya is, uh, she's not feeling good, not COVID related stuff, but can't speak. So she's like, I got no voice coming out of my mouth. So when her seller called in this situation, she's trying to explain to them and they can't hear her. So we're going to have an agency to step up and at least relay that information to them to, to make sure that we take care of their seller. So uh, any, no issues with that, Jody, correct? Uh, we can have any of our Sierra Vista agents. Uh, I think Josh has already kind of stepped in to help. He oh, can good. Have a conversation with that'll, that'll be perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay. So that's the direction I'm heading off today. Josh is going to be leading our uh, script and role play time this morning. So you guys are going to have a treat for that. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. New norm. Boom. I got some good news. Our, our agent friend in Sierra Vista that I, I was telling you about that uh, cares for a couple of elderly ladies, her and one she was scared that was going to was being tested for COVID-19, uh, does not have COVID. So and hey. she's doing better and they're going to actually release her to go home either today or tomorrow. So those are excellent. That's excellent news. Big pressure relief off of our agent as well. So she's like, okay. So I'm like, well, let's go. Let's, let's, let's be cautious. Be careful. We need to know those things, but let's let's go. So I think it's a big pressure relief off of her. What about you guys? Tell me about yesterday. Positive things that occurred from yesterday's work. There's Cindy Powell. Good morning. Good morning. I'll start since no one else has anything positive to talk about. Uh, I actually had a a face-to-face -face appointment with someone and it was it was interestingly awkward and it's like wow I haven't met with someone in, in a, a few weeks like face-to-face -face. she's like I know and I said well this is nice so um, I say that to say that there are still very interested people that are wanting to buy and sell real estate and if you keep your eyes open there are lots of agents that feel like they're circling the tub right so keep your eyes open for that and if you got agent friends that are out there that feel like they're not getting support or they're not getting help and they don't know how they're going to navigate this over the next few months get them to me get them to david so that we can talk to them engage in conversation and start seeing how we can help them who else anthony satello how's it going i saw your numbers man look at you go Yep. Um, yesterday was a pretty interesting day. Went to a home inspection, found a lot, um, a couple major things wrong with the house. Um, hopefully the seller steps up and fixes it. Um, I think right now, besides appraisals and everything else going on, I think sellers think they have gold and think they have to get away with selling, excuse my language, but shitty homes. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, historically we've not that's not been tolerated in this market there were not buyers aren't going to overpay they're just not so um you're dealing with the listing is that correct no i'm dealing with the i'm dealing with the buyer and i'm dealing with the flip uh that's the only reason why i say i hope the sell the the seller steps up gotcha. um okay. in a regular sale i don't think it would be an issue but being that it's a flip um Lately, I've been seeing that they tend to cut a little bit of corners and sometimes they're not willing to step up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah think about that. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Who else? Oh, I've got some good news. Yeah, lay it on me. Well, I have a buyer who is working with a USDA loan, getting a home in a motto. And yesterday, we just got the Benzer back and they did sort of what you were talking about, Anthony. They were cutting corners on their flip, even though the home looks great compared to what it looked like before the flip. 
um, there's, there were several things that we um, identified on the Binzer and they've agreed to fix all of them. So we're looking good in that regard. Um, but the USDA is taking, you know, 14 days instead of five, according to our lender, to um, turn that around. So we may have to delay closing a couple of weeks, but um, that's still all good news. Everything's still moving forward. Gotcha. Um, well, that, that's, let's segue into that conversation. We, uh, right before eight o'clock, we were having a conversation about some new VA and FHA guidelines. Um, Jody, do, can you uh, help us have that conversation since you're, you're kind of leading it? Um, yeah, FHA guidelines have changed uh, and or VA and the credit score has to be a little bit higher. And so you should reach out to your lenders and make sure everybody that's in escrow still qualifies. We had a loan pooled VA um, yesterday that was supposed to close in two days because they didn't make the new cut. And it's put a lot of people in harm's way. So reach out to your lenders and have a conversation and make sure your buyers are still good to go. Yes. This is time to do the due diligence piece of the puzzle and analyze every, you know, transaction that you have in escrow. Uh, Cause this is a sad situation uh, that we're helping an agent up in our down in Sierra Vista with uh, families already packed up and moved to the East coast. And two days before closing the, the buyer doesn't qualify and squash it's done. So, that uh, that's a scary situation, right, Donna? Yes, Amanda. We need to be yeah. aware of those. Are any of you guys running into that already? Yeah, I am. Okay, Can you give us some so, details, or uh, I've got a couple. I do a lot of VA, so yeah. um, you know I have a couple FHAs that are right on the cusp. Um, you know, one VA that came in lower, and then this morning I had a phone call from a lender telling me that a buyer that was qualified a few days ago is not qualified now. Um, mm. Luckily, I, I've called about five or six different lenders and they seem like they're, it, the, the credit score is dependent upon the lender. Mm -hmm. So there's a few in town that'll still take ones that are a little bit lower for now at least. So we're going to try to transition. Okay. I did something um, that I've never done the other day. I did, um, I had listed that I would show this listing that I have from four to six and actually we changed it from three to six because of the interest. And um, I, you know, didn't allow children or anything and I set up <coughs> on a different time. But I, I don't usually encounter buyers, you know, if I have the listing. And I literally looked at them and said, so do you feel like your jobs are stable? Or, because, there's so much change and, and people were really open about the one young man said, yes, I work in technology and I saw his badge. I could tell who he worked for. So I knew he was safe and the other girl worked in healthcare. So as a couple, I knew that they were pretty safe and guaranteeing that they had continued income, but I didn't even want to get into contracts. I, I hate to say that, you know, but I, it, it's, it's a really precarious balance right now. And I'm doing the same thing with my, buyers as they move forward it's, it's just yeah it's not that we're getting nosy it's that we're there to protect them if they we don't want to put them in harm's way we don't want them to have expenses um for appraisals and home inspections and all of that if we can't get them to the finish line um i did one yesterday and um i asked the same question are you guys comfortable knowing that you're going to have jobs in 30, 60, 90 days and from thereafter, are you okay with that? Um, have you thought that far out? You know, what are your thoughts here? And, um, you know, we got into a contract yesterday on one of them and the other one, they're coming to town to buy. They need, you know, she's starting a residency here on in July 15th. So they need to buy now and, so that's going to be a new, you know, challenge is getting them to be able to get to see the properties, you know, and yeah, and write those offers. It, it's it's a lot tougher. So don't yeah. put so much on your plate because it's going to take more time to do everything. And make sure that your lenders know and reach out to your buyers immediately and order the appraisals. 
because that's what's really slowing us down in today's market is the appraisers because a lot of them have stopped working and the ones that are working are taking a lot longer. And then of course we have sellers that aren't allowing access to the appraisers and they won't let them in the door. And that's really um, a lot of the calls I'm getting is, okay, well, we're past the binzer and now the appraiser needs to get in and the seller won't let them in. So are that's they allowed a big to do issue. that? I mean, you're yeah. not allowed to do that. The purchase contract says, but everybody's crying COVID. And so, you know, they're trying to stay safe, they're trying to stay healthy. Um, so, we have to educate our sellers what the process is. And, you know, Mr. Seller, you don't have to be there on appraisal day. The appraiser will go in. They won't touch anything. They will just look around, take their photos, do their measuring, and exit the property. Um, but a lot of them aren't comfortable. Maybe yeah. we should meet, maybe we should meet appraisers there, huh? As listing agents. That's a great idea. I mean, I, I always suggest that anyway. As I was just gonna say I that. have a listing that's in escrow, I usually go into MLS and say key safe no. The buyer's mm -hmm. agent knows it's still there, but the appraiser doesn't. And that way I get a call from the appraiser. I get to schedule the appointment. I get to tell him I will let him in. And then I can be there. And that way we can tell the seller, hey, you know, we're gonna walk around with wipes if they touch anything or door handles and we'll we'll get them out as soon as possible for you yeah and then even before covid i mean that's something you we should all consider anyways because we don't know what the appraiser is 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 going to appraise it but if we kind of give him a little bit of light of what why we price it the way we did um they may be open to that to that information correct it's always you're always welcome to hand the appraiser a package they can mm -hmm. look at it, they can choose to see it, they can choose not to see it. But if you hand them a package, especially with a sheet of all the upgrades and amenities that the seller's done, you know, mm -hmm. new air conditioner six months ago, new water heater this time, all new appliances in this year, um, the appraiser will really look at those lists and evaluate the upgrades based on other properties they're appraising. Can I promote a house? Yes, of course. <laughs> so I, um, I took a listing yesterday and the house is in the 85742 zip code um, in, on Eagle Stone Loop. Great it, area. Uh, yeah, 1700 and something square feet. And um, it's a three bedroom, two bath. The, I, I never know whether to call this a two story or not when you have like a loft and just a bedroom upstairs. So it's, that's what's upstairs. Um, and the same person, it's been one owner and there's no polybutylene and um, she's got new replacement windows, uh, newer. And um, we're gonna list it at, oh man, what did I say we were gonna list it at? <laughs> 227.5. 227. What are the cross streets? Um, you, you can get to it from Overton off of Hartman, Overton, okay. Hartman, Eaglestone okay. Loop, or you can go all the way up to Eaglestone and drive, you know, a different way around. The backyard faces east. And um, when does it go into MLS? We're, we're doing we're doing photos Monday. So next week. But if you're interested, message me and I'll, I'll send you the other address. In case you want to yeah, I've, I've got a buyer. I was going to pitch. Yeah, I actually have a few buyers. She um, the. The seller works from home for the VA. So she's, she takes like crisis calls. So she's working from home right now. So um, we're definitely doing the two hour notice thing, you know, um, but yeah, let me know privately if you're interested and I'll get more details. Okay. I'll send you a text too, Donna, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Good hey job. everybody. I've, <clears throat> I've got that buyer, um, they're coming in, they need a house immediately. They want to close by the end of, um, at the latest end of May, but they'd like to close sooner. Uh, three bedroom, two bath, minimum 1,500 square feet, 20 to 25 mile uh, minima, minutes from Banner Medical. That's where she'll be doing her residency. And it's up to 250, 
So if anybody has any new listings that aren't in MLS that are coming available, please think of me. Awesome. Way to go, ladies. I got um, one on Jody, the south side that might work if, if it wouldn't be that. It's about 25 minutes from Banner, but it's going to be eh, maybe a little further than that. So I'll, I'll, I'll map the, the route and then let you know if it's going to work for me. Thank you. Uh, Jody, it's not my listing, but I know of one um, near, near that area that I can um, talk to you about. It's going to be sold as is, but it's right there in the like Elm, Unman Elm area. I okay. Think. Thank you. I'll get with you later. All right. Let's hear uh, what, what's on your uh, success list for today. How do we make this a successful day, guys? Change somebody's life. Way to go, Dan. That's step number one. What about you, you agents? Well, let's go. What are you doing today to make it a successful day? I have a listen appointment at 10 o'clock via Zoom. Nice. How's, How's your it? ankle, Anthony? How's your ankle? Oh, my ankle's fine. I, I rolled that thing so much since the Marine Corps that I'm so, I'm used to it. It looks um, awful. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it hurt that day, um, but I walked it off. I'm already walking the hill again. Okay. Yep. What else? But thank you for asking, by the way. Way to go, Anthony. Way to go, Donna, caring for people. What else are you beautiful agents going to do today to uh, make it a successful day? I'm going to think that my day is a success if I have 50 participants in my 11 o'clock class. I've got COVID-19 addendum and counters and addendums. So if everybody on this call, which we have 24 right now, enters my room at 11, um, I bet we can get to 50 and that's my goal. I'll be there. All right. So we'll hear Jason and probably him and her. And her. I'll be there. I don't know about her. Awesome. Hey, I'm not an agent, oh, but I bring, bring a friend. That's it. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that I'm sticking <laughs> to my schedule and I'm finding that when I'm reaching out to a lot of agents just to check in, see how they're doing, most are doing pretty good, but I'm getting a hey, this is going on in my transaction. Can you help me? Yeah. And I wouldn't hear that if I wasn't reaching out to them and they would probably just, uh, you know, let that slide or maybe not get it taken care of. And when I hear about it, I can get it taken care of pretty quickly. So yeah. if something's going on, uh, you know, even if you didn't direct it to the escrow officer, reach out to Colleen, to me, uh, we can help things move forward. Will do. That's good advice. Thanks, Tricia. Um, so can I ask if you are going to invite somebody to any of our trainings, please let somebody on staff know and then let the um, agent that you are inviting. If we do ask who they are to let us know, we have had some hacking issues going on across the country with people just sneaking into Zoom calls and getting um, private information. Um, so if you are inviting someone, please let them know, hey, you might get asked who you are. Just let them know your name and that you're a guest of me so that we don't kick them off the call. Hey, Perfect. Heather, that, that, that's a good point. On the weekend, First American shut me off of Zoom because of the same thing, that there were people that were uh, jumping into calls and gathering information that they shouldn't have been able to get at, and uh, on Monday morning, I got told I could get back in again. Pain in the neck. That's good to know, and that's a good policy. Let's clarify a policy from the staff, and, and maybe we start, we come up with a number that we're going to invite people with. All right, so let's get that done today. Okay, right off the bat, um, Denise Lopez um, may be joining some of our calls. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but yeah. <laughs> Good, that's great. Perfect. Guys, I need some more excitement out of you in the morning. Am I the only one that gets juiced up, amped up? I've been awake for less than an hour, and I'm already ready to rock and roll. Put me in a cage of the bear. I'm going to win. I've been awake for more than an hour, and I'm still in my bathroom with coffee. <laughs> you guys just got to be amped up this is what this whole morning is about is the energy that you project into the day is what you're going to take out of it when oh. you put both feet on the ground i want satan to look up scared like damn they're out of bed you're much younger oh. than i am yeah <laughs> come to me in 50 I'm years we'll guarantee the exact okay. same response hey i already walked the hill so i don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> high five Cicilla. high five Dan, thank you for sending me two books yesterday. I got I got a little time to read now. You're welcome. You asked. I, I do it. 
Hey, Kim, you were going to say something. I saw your little microphone light up. What you got, Kim? Pastor? He stepped away. I saw uh, he was going to bring some some deep knowledge, but then he... <laughs> <laughs> anybody I'm, I'm else, proud of him. He's working his first right now. Uh, some plans for today. Uh, what are you doing to reach out to your sphere? What are you doing Hello. to generate? What are you doing? There you go, Kim. Lay some knowledge. Yes. Hey, uh, right now, just today, actually, I have uh, my first inspection today. Yay! There you go. Nice yes, job. Yes, at 2 p.m. And um, I have a question I think I may ask uh, to our broker. Uh, actually, I have uh, a buyer ready and uh she's qualified but uh she's kind of worried say are you guys still showing houses she's ready and qualified and we already just uh um target some four houses to show can we still go ahead and show houses with uh, these uh, new rules um yes you can um, please respect, first of all, your client's wishes and oh, yeah. protect them the way they feel comfortable going. Um, mm -hmm. Also, definitely read the MLS and make sure that the MLS, um, the showing instructions state that you can show the property. I would mm -hmm. always call the phone to show number, of course, and double check to make sure it's available and that the sellers are comfortable that you come in and win really respect the timelines at a great at a really high level um of if you're telling them you're going to be there between 12 and 1 be there between 12 and 1 or call them and let them know hey we're running late or hey we're running a little bit early can we come in so respect that um ask them that they not touch anything you don't touch anything either once you enter the house you know, with the doorknob on the front, then you're done. Carry, um, carry Lysol wipes with you. And if somebody does accidentally touch something, or if you want to look inside a closet or something, just wipe it down when you're finished. And just, you know, bring all that high level of respect to the showing. Um, I highly recommend that you don't show a lot of houses, that you really get them engaged with virtual tours online and or multiple photos in the MLS first, send them the link, have them do the aerial shot, have them Google the property, look at what it backs up to, look at the buildings around it. Are they two story? Do they like the privacy issue? Um, really get them to look at it at a high level before you personally look at it because that'll take a lot of the showings off the plate. Also, don't put them in your car. You're to meet them at each address and then enter the property. Try to keep your social distancing. And if anybody's in the property, you might ask them if they'd like to step outside while you're walking through. Um, you know, it's just all the caution, you know, every bit of caution that we've talked about for weeks now. Just do it at a very high level and make sure your client's comfortable looking. But Lots of properties are selling every day and more on the market every day. So get that search set up and show the good ones quickly before they sell. Pro tip, don't have the search go to the client, have the search go to you so you can tell the client. Thank you. But I'm proud of you, Kim, great job. Thank awesome. you. Way to go guys. Who else? We got uh, just a couple more minutes before uh, Mr. Berkeley steps in here and leads some scripts and role play. Uh, mm -hmm. If you if you don't know Josh, there's a lot of uh, 495 people over here. Josh Berkeley leads a team in Sierra Vista and uh, Tucson. He's the um, man and does a lot of business. So he and he is incredible in scripts and role play. So you're going to get a good treat today. Uh, last last thing, give me some other positives. What's your, what your what are you getting done today? Let's go. So I am going to um, work on scripts. I took a two-day on -day online luxury course um, with people from Scottsdale and Columbus, Ohio. You're so and fancy. Two, th I, two things that came out of it from the scripts perspective is that they don't talk about commission. Morning. They talk about professional fees. Yeah. Ooh, I, like I that. loved that oh. verbiage saying that we have a professional fee that we charge. 
because you're working with other professionals and they like they wrap their brain around that. I love that. I thought that was such great verbiage if somebody's trying to ask you about your commission. And um, the other thing that they talked about was um, not just um, a listing presentation, you know, put it in MLS, pray that it put, you know, sells all those things that we talked about. Um, but this is my marketing presentation. And right now, more than ever, I think that that verbiage and our marketing presentation, mm -hmm. it, it's changed, it's changing yeah. every day. So I thought those were both two really good things that I am right. working to incorporate into what I talk to my buyers and sellers about. Hey, Nicole. Hey, that's awesome, Donna. Hey, Nicole, the pet thing is Thursday. At <laughs> So. We saw Kayla's dog too. Yeah, no, no, you you don't talk about hiccup like that. That's actually toothless. That's the first oh, time really? he's been on. <laughs> oh, Grab her, bring her back. All right, we got you. we got a chance for one more person. What's a hey, successful guys, day? I, I have to apologize for coming in late, but yeah. Bryce had a sale on uh, Chef Boyardee lasagna in a can, and I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> you you should have Doomsday Prepper. I'm here. <laughs> Love you all. And it, I apologize for being late. All right. No problem. Well, Dick, you spoke up. What's what's going to make it a successful day for you? Well, I'll tell you, I had a great day yesterday. Uh, you may have saw the interview I did with uh, with uh, back at you. And, uh, they interviewed me using a, uh, a platform called uh, StreamYard.com which does live streaming mm -hmm. and uh, because the company works uh, for us, they are a preferred vendor with the NAR, uh, with the NAR and also uh, Facebook, uh, we have a tremendous amount of response to it and I'm looking very closely at the uh, uh, use of uh, live streaming, what you can do with it, but yeah. in addition to that, uh, uh, it was a, it was a great day. I, I did a, you know, I mentioned yesterday that I wanted to do a, um, a, uh, you know, a, uh, virtual coffee break with people and I did. Awesome. Good for you. And I'm getting a response off of it. Good. So just for, uh, for everyone else's knowledge, if you're, if you're considering using bomb bomb video, that type of thing, Dick is a good resource. Don't let that gray hair fool you. This guy is hip to the technology, right? Well, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. I also have a couple extra cans of lasagna. To me, anyone who can put lasagna in a can has got to be a genius, and Chef Boyardee is a genius. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, well on that note, we're going to get over, and uh, I'm going to jump to our regional call. So, Dan, you got the intermediate time until Josh jumps on. He, I just talked to him, and he gave him instructions on how to get on, so he should be coming on in just a moment. You guys have a fantastic day. Know that your staff is not only uh, thinking about you, uh, caring for you, reaching out to you, and we're ready it, to stand in the gap for any needs that you have. I hope you guys are feeling that. Give me a nod or a thumbs up if you feel like you're being supported in a great way. Absolutely. You guys are great. All right, perfect. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Jay. Bye. Look forward to it, Jay. Hey, guys. Uh, since I did that uh, interview yesterday, uh, I posted it on our um, Keller Williams uh, Facebook site. And if you get a chance, it's, I know it's 14 minutes long, listen to it. And I'd love to get your response on what you thought about it. Because, you know, one of the things that is very important to me is talking about the culture we have here at, uh, at Keller Williams and what we're trying to do. So uh, I'd like to get your pros and your cons on it. Uh, right now, you know, I, I thought about it last night. We talk about the housing crisis. Well, the biggest thing about the housing crisis right now is the fact that people are stuck in their house and how do they, how do they uh, uh, you know, handle quarantine and everything else. We are the keepers of the American dream. I mean, real, realtors is a great business to be in because the American dream usually is based upon owning a house and taking care of your family. And 
most realtors, most of them I've ever met, really are more than just getting a paycheck. They are really concerned about helping people get a new lease upon life. So please uh, let me know what you think of it, all right? Fair enough. Thank you, Dick. Good morning, all. I'm gonna turn over everything to Mr. Berkeley. Now, he's been uh, gracious enough to share his knowledge and expertise with us. So guys, fire out some questions with him. Josh, you're unmuted. Rock and roll, my dude. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody. Oh, wait, everybody's muted, so I can't hear Well, you. good morning, Josh. How are you, my buddy? Morning. Boy, do you look handsome this morning. Thanks, Dick. I'm just trying to keep up with you. Well, good luck. Um, <laughs> hey, well, good morning. It's so good to be with everybody. Um, to be very frank, I'm not really sure what... Um, Dan, I think you're going to help like lead this, right? You're going to help, yes, help uh, guide this. Okay. So do you guys just want to open up for questions? Do we want to do some script practice? What are we thinking, Dan? So guys, Josh comes from a mega team out and he owns a team out in Sierra Vista. There's a lot of stuff. They've been doing a lot of great work with this shift in the market. So he's got some good, good scripts on how to overcome the reluctancy in the sellers and buyer side of the transaction during this Corona thing. So if you guys have a question, we've been working a lot towards it. That one question that Kim brought up this morning about, hey, can I still show properties and stuff like that? Let's start with that one. Hey, Josh, when you have a client that's kind of apprehensive about showing or, or even viewing a house on both sides of the transaction, how would you advise or yourself do it or advise your, your agents to handle a situation like that? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. To be very frank, I think it's really important that you understand everybody's comfortability first and foremost. So if the buyer is okay with meeting and coming to look at the home, and as long as you are and the seller is okay, I would just take extra precautions, which we've already been talking about that everybody knows. But the other, and with, with precautions, I just mean obviously hand sanitizer, washing your hands even more. Um, you just have to make sure everybody's comfortable. So I've just been asking all of my clients, hey, would you prefer to do like a, a FaceTime type video or would you prefer to meet in person? And then of course, practice social distance. Well, I mean, a lot of it is just common sense. But I will say, it's really important to get creative with people. Um, one thing that my team did yesterday for pretty much all of our listings is we called Gail, Gail Cop, um, out of the KLP office. And we said, hey, can you come down to Sierra Vista, spend a day and do a Matterport for all of our listings? Because that's an, a virtual tour type walkthrough. And she was willing to work with us and do that. And so I think that that's just an extra level of service that we can provide and then then buyers can see those online and actually ha kind of take a walk through of the home without having to physically be present. Hey Josh, I think that's a wonderful idea because you know the the business we're going into is changing and to be able to provide our clients with extra, you know, value added uh, services like say Mataport and our concern is to help also take care of our vendors and to help them do business. And Gail's a great, great source, all right? Uh, and one of the things I especially like about the, Josh, uh, the, about the Josh Berkeley team is that their leader is really a lovable guy. Now, I know nine out of 10 people won't agree with that. However, <laughs> I, I really think you show a love, a love of compassion for your client and for your team. And it permeates all the way through the very beginning. You know, all, all of your teammates feel the same way. So when you're actually talking to your clients and you're talking about value added to be able to offer them a, a Matterport. Now, I, I don't like to call it Matterport. I've used Matterport. All right. I think it's a great product, but I realize that most 50% of all Americans are hypochondriacs and they like things that sound like a diagnostic. So I refer to it as a whole house MRI. And they say, oh my gosh, you're gonna provide, provide a, a whole house MRI? <laughs> That's wonderful. It's the same concept that back in the, in the uh, 1970s, 1980s that all of a sudden 
Joe's Auto Service became Joe's Auto Diagnostic Service, all right? <laughs> Matterport's a great tool, but don't refer to it as Matterport. Refer to it as something that it, 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 it makes, uh, makes a difference to the client. And, the, the, you know, and I, I have found that out. The whole house MRI is That's really cool. a great way to explain it because we're going to give them something that no one else gives them. Well, and, and Dick, I really like that because you're explaining it in a way they understand. And I think that that is so important, especially right now in a time of transition. And that's why scripting is so important too. Because when we script, we take off our realtor lingo hat and we speak to clients in the ways that they can understand. And as I always joke around with my team, I say that we let them have it our way. And we do it nicely and graciously. So right now, I think we have a huge opportunity to do business differently and to separate ourselves from the amateurs. Guys, right now, what is happening is the marketplace is going to filter out the amateurs and they're going after professionals. And I want to make sure that everybody understands something. And then I'll get off of my soapbox here and we'll actually do some scripting and roll. Your soapbox, you're doing well. <laughs> Thanks. So the definition of a professional is someone who knows what they know, knows what they don't know, and knows the difference between the two. Notice, I didn't say a professional is someone that has 10 plus years of experience. I didn't say a professional is somebody that has hundreds of sales under their belt. A professional is somebody who knows what they know, knows what they don't, and knows the difference. So it doesn't matter how long you've been in real estate. You can differentiate yourself as a professional by your knowledge and your competency level. And that's what people are searching for right now more than ever. So you all understand and you all know that a shift is happening and we're in the midst of it. Right now, just by us being together in this class and being at a brokerage that supports a higher level of learning, that alone is what's going to set you apart. So I just want to, you know, say compliments to all of you for being in this room right now. I'm, I'm really excited to grow with you. Well, Josh, thank you. Thank you from the rest of us peons here, because we realize that you and your team are really a great team. All right. And the words are really true, though, because the whole world's changed. What's going to happen as we come out of this health crisis is a whole new word, way of doing business with say really and it's not what you know it's who you know and how you how much you care yeah. and you know there's no way we're all going to know all the answers but we surround ourselves with people who do and quite honestly there is no better brokerage to work for right now than keller williams because of our culture of helping each other out and the mere fact that here you are, and you know, I don't want to make you feel, you know, big, make your head bigger, but you've been very successful in a market that is very small, and you've got the loyalty and love of a team that works very hard. You can see how people respond uh, to their to their clients in the way that they replicate their leader. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Josh uh, Barkley fan. I, all your people, I think, are really <laughs> wonderful. But we can learn a bit. A lot of us are just independent. If we take the same attitude to give more to our clients than what the other person will and to listen to them and <laughs> encompass them into the process of either buying a home or selling a home, and we're using different technologies. And quite honestly, the world of the open house, as we now know it, is going to change drastically. And no, you know, the, the, the guy who wants, the person who wants to sell their house and the thought of having 30 people come through their house that they do not know touching everything, probably is going to scare them to death. All right? Yeah. And so... To be awesome. able to take advantage of technology and of the Matterport, excuse me, MRI, 
of OHALS MRI is a great difference that separates us from everyone else. Thank you, Dick. I'm going to cut you off right there and put Josh back on the mic. Nick, Dick Nichols, everyone, appreciate your the feedback. But I want to tie in on what Josh was talking about, and we're going to jump back in the scripting on that. Is scripting is so important because, like he said, it allows us to create an environment that the client can understand. And I love that. We're giving it to them our way. I like that. It's good stuff. So let them have it your way. Yeah, let them have it your way. That's pretty cool stuff. It's like we're Burger King. Yeah. But <laughs> kind of, I guess. Kind of. Reverse. You're going to have what I give you. Kind of. Thing. Yeah, exactly right. It's <laughs> good stuff. Now, anyone have, you want a situation when it throw at Josh? Like another question that was, was posed to me is, all right, Josh, I'm a seller in this market. And you and I have been working for a while on putting it on the market. But right now, I'm unsure. that I don't know if I want to sell it right this second because of the uncertainty in the marketplace. I see that the market's trending downwards. Why would I want to sell it now? I just might as well hold on to it until this all goes away. Yeah. You know, Dan, I can really appreciate your concern. And I am so glad that you've trusted me enough to have me be your advisor. Thank you for that opportunity. You know, Dan, I actually want to give you a different perspective. Do I have your permission to do that? Absolutely. Okay, super. You know, I actually believe that now is absolutely 100% the right time to put your house on the market. May I explain? No. Yeah. Well, Dan, think about this right now. Today, you have a more captive audience than ever before. Because while people are being quarantined, they are at home and they are looking at houses. And so right now, when so many other sellers are scared to actually go on the market, you have the chance to gain market share by getting people excited so that when this quarantine is over, they're going to be at your house first and they're going to be ready to go. Where the other sellers, well, they're just going to be behind and you'll be getting sold while they're just now prepping. Does that make sense? That makes sense. But why, why would I want to put it on the market now if I could just wait until the coronavirus subsides and then want the market come back up? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a really great question. And what I don't know the answer to that because we can't predict the future. But here's what I do know. I know that right now you have an opportunity to contract at a higher price before the other sellers go on the market after the quarantine. And the reason being, is because you're going to be positioned and you'll have less competition. Do you know what less competition means for you, Dan? Sells it faster? Sells it faster for more money. Okay. I mean, you do want more money and you do want to sell quicker than the competition, right? Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, let's simply do the right thing and sign the contract and get to work now. Perfect. I like okay. it. Great. Great. I'll electronically send you the documents. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. So and what did, did you guys, I don't know, did you like that? Was there anything in there that you, that you got? I don't know. What do you guys think? One word. Amen. <laughs> You're absolutely right on target. Thanks. Really, really oh, good, Josh. Josh. I just have a question. Um, I, I have a seller that, that is concerned. They're elderly and they are concerned about putting their house on the market, have people come through their house. Uh, so, so, hey, Josh, I'm, I'm really scared that, that folks are going to come into my house and my wife and I were, were concerned, our kids are concerned for us about the COVID and them bringing in, uh, you know, potential uh, the virus to our house. Yeah, you know, Tracy, I can really appreciate that. <clears throat> and truly, your concerns are valid. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything that you believe we could do to mitigate your concerns? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what you guys can do to help me out to get, get, get us past all of this. Yeah, absolutely. So what I hear you saying is that you're concerned that people that have possibly been exposed to the virus are coming into your home. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's bingo. Okay. Well, I can appreciate that, Tracy. Let me tell you what the title companies have been doing and a strategy that we're implementing that I think would really help uh, mitigate your concerns. W would that be okay if I told you about that? Sure. Okay, super. Thank you for that permission. So what we can do, Tracy, is first and foremost, we can have every buyer and realtor that wants to show the home 
sign a, a document that states that they have not been exposed, they have not been traveling, and that they're in good health. Now, if they're not willing to sign that, then we can politely say, thanks, but no thanks. Please rely on the pictures or this virtual tour that we have on the property. And we can uh, make that available to them if they're not willing to sign that document. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the other thing too, because I know that we're gonna get a lot of activity on your house since you're, you're pricing right, correct? Yes. Yeah. So the other thing that we can do is we can make sure that all appointments are scheduled within, um, within timeframes that you're comfortable so that they're not back to back, so that there's social distancing. And I, as your champion, will make sure that that all is taken care of and I'll take that off of your plate and I will run with that for you. So you don't have to worry about a thing. Hey, uh, hey Josh. Okay, great, thank you. Josh, can we extend that, that document to say, uh, have you ever or even considered taking a class in, in say engineering? And so we can bet them, we get rid of all the engineers. <laughs> well, Dick, my properties are priced correctly and I can show that to an engineer on a proper comparative market analysis. So no problem there. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good answer, but I hate engineers. <laughs> okay. Jody, they awesome. they, they, they Jody, so, so hey, Josh, okay. thank you so much for that. Um, I actually recorded it on my phone and I'm gonna use it. Oh, I'm gonna use a lot of that. I do um, not give permission to be recorded. <laughs> Too late. By the way, when, it, when a salesperson <laughs> calls you and they're like, this call is being recorded, I always say, I do not give permission to be recorded. And then they actually hang up on me. It's really interesting. That's funny. Yeah. No, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it back and forth right now while I'm getting, I have a listing appointment and I know that price and the, this Corona stuff is going to be an issue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this like five or six times while, while I'm getting ready for that appointment. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Right, Jody, you had something? Oh, can I just um, add one thing really quick, Jody? I'm sorry. Uh, just to that, Anthony and to Dick and everybody, and Tracy asked that question, you do have to be flexible to what the client's needs are. If they are truly uncomfortable, then, then run with it. Just get creative with how you can market, how you can get it shown. Um, you can do videos. As you probably heard, I said, is there anything we can do to mitigate your concerns? And then you just address it and handle the objection. But please understand, I am not suggesting that you go against their wishes because everybody is at a different spot with what's going on and you have to respect that. So thank you, Jody, go ahead. I wanted to tag on to your first um, script that you were playing. Um, I've talked them into selling their house now but there's, now their concern is, okay, but if I sell, am I going to get to buy something? How, what is that going to look like for me to buy? I mean, if people aren't letting people show their houses, I mean, I might be one person, but is there going to be enough houses for me to look at to find my next place? Well, Jody, I sure appreciate you expressing that concern to me. And I want to tell you what I'm committed to. Number one, in my whole career, I have never made anybody homeless and I'm not going to start with you. Okay, how are we gonna do that? Yeah, by finding you a home, of course. I mean, that's what you want, right? Absolutely, yeah, I need a new place. Great, you know, Jody, I can appreciate that there's some concern in the marketplace. And I just want you to know that I will do whatever it takes to get you into that right home. And if that means, that means, um, doing FaceTime tours and convincing sellers to let me in for you. I will do that. I will knock on doors, whatever it takes. Just know I'm not going to leave you stranded and I will help you achieve your goals. Okay. <laughs> you stumped the broker. Jo uh, Jody's a high C now. She needs to know the details. <laughs> Uh, I want to address something that Teresa put in the chat. She asked, can we, request our, yeah, can we request our clients use gloves and masks to go into a home? Absolutely. So, exactly. Um, I want to tag on to that is in the world that we're in today, guys, the expectations have changed and the stay safe has replaced have a good day. The checking on them and making sure, hey, make sure you stay safe out there, wear your gloves and, you know, sanitize everything. It's now a loving gesture and it isn't so much rude where 
guys, I'd love to show you some houses. I would, I would prefer that you please enter the house with gloves on and a mask. I just want to make sure that my clients are safe. So taking that, that added level is just icing on the cake. And like Josh is saying, everything he's saying in the scripts is about the client, the client's experience, the client's expectations, everything about the client, everything, everything, everything. So you just like, I'm not Teresa, just you adding that, Hey, would you please wear gloves and masks? It's just you taking the precautions to make sure that your clients are safe. Are you going to provide them for them? If we can find them. Right. Yeah. Jody, I, I do want to say the, the other thing too, that I would probably tell you if you were in that situation where you're a seller that's selling and then buying, I would, I would just simply ask this, you, you know, Jody, we've taken extra precautions for the buyers that you're letting into your home, right? Yeah. 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 Well, because you're doing that, please understand that other sellers are doing that too. So please rest assured that there are definitely sellers like yourself that are allowing buyers into their home and we'll make sure that we get you into those right homes, just like you're doing for buyers. Perfect. Okay. I think sometimes when you go back to, to, to their situation and relate it to what they're going through, that's when you're going to have the most success. Great. Um, and I don't think it's offensive to ask your clients to take extra precautions. To be very frank, you guys, a lot of it is just how you present. Are you smiling? Are you happy? Are you positive? Um, here's a great one for a buyer. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You know what, Dan? Um, I know that you want to get into this home and we want to make sure that if it's the right home that the seller wants to work with you, right? Right, Dan? Right. Sorry, right. Okay. Danny Roth talked from my office. Got to say hi. Yeah. Hi. So in, in order to make a really good impression of the, to the seller in case we do want to offer on their house, let's be extra cautious and extra respectful. I recommend that we wear booties, and we take some, you know, take some extra precautions with everything that's going on in this world and make sure the seller knows that so that they're comfortable, not only letting you in their house, but working with you in the future. Does that sound like a good plan? I don't, I don't have any of the supplies. Yeah, no problem, Dan. I will make sure that everything's provided for you, okay? Oh, you will? That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. So are I mean, you going to pick me up? Or are we going to go or am I meeting you there? Yeah, so, well, since we've already had our buyer consultation and we've already gone over the buyer broker agreement, um, I'm comfortable just meeting you there. So would today at three work or tomorrow at four be better? I'll see you tomorrow, if that's okay. okay. Wonderful, thanks. Yeah, by the way, I'm not, I'm not meeting them unless we've had our buyer consultation and our buyer- I love it. You're not meeting them. buyers anyways. What'd you say, Anthony? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, I don't work with buyers. I know I had to write a contract the other day and I had to ask people how to do it, but that's another story. No, it's called leverage, man. Use it. <laughs> but no, it was, it was great. That I want to point out that one, one huge thing he, he pointed out is since we have our buyer broker signed, definitely in this time of day, man, don't waste, a, I hate to say it so bluntly, don't waste your time. If they're not willing to sign a buyer broker agreement, they're not going to be willing to do the things that you need them to do to move forward in this marketplace. And when you have those expectations set up from the start, it makes your transaction easier the entire way. And if you, if you need help writing a contract, I know where you can go. I'll see you guys on the, the broker call at 11, right? I'd like to jump in on something really quick here. Um, in one of my first deals, I was asked by uh, the mom of my client, well, why does she have to sign this buyer broker agreement? And I just looked at her and I said, well, it's just how I do business. I don't do business any other way. It protects you and it protects me. You know, and the, that's really true. It does protect you. And the reality is, it's not just getting their buy-in. It's you making a decision to commit to them. And when I explain that to my buyers, when I say, hey, this form is my commitment to work exclusively on your behalf and to represent your interests. And the clients that choose to work with me and I also choose to work with, enter into this agreement with me because we're 100% committed. Now, are you, Kim, 100% committed to this process? Yes. Awesome. I am too. So let's go ahead and do the right thing and make it official. Sound good? 
Now, if I'm like, now if I'm, you know, you guys saw my tonality, right? Or you heard my tonality, you saw my smile. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, oh, well, we have to sign this form. My broker requires it. You know how crazy they are. You know, I can say that because Lisa's not on the phone, Jody. I would never talk <laughs> about you that way. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really, you're expressing your commitment to them and guys, they sign it. And if they're not willing to sign it, then they're not serious. Okay. It, it just is what it is. There's enough business to go around and you don't have to, you don't have to hold on to that one difficult client. Okay. It's not worth it. All right, guys, we got time for one more. Who wants to hit them with something or let's, let's add some, some more into this. Someone. Anybody, Bueller? It doesn't have to be about the virus. You can ask me any questions if you want to script a role play about. Josh, what about the people that are facing um, possibly losing their jobs and they've been looking at homes, they're all excited, they was pre-qualified and now they're going to be laid off for several months. How is this being taken care of? Are they, is everything just on hold or do they just, completely lose and have to start all over again? Well, that's a case by case situation. It really is. Okay. If somebody knows that they're going to lose their job, you know, in good faith, I can't recommend they, they go and buy a house because number one, they probably won't qualify. You have to have a job in order to qualify for a loan, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes care of that scenario. But if it's somebody whose job might be shaky, where they feel like they could possibly get another job if something happened, right? I, I mean, the reality is, and this is what I would say is, you know, you've got to live somewhere, right? So really the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to be paying somebody else's mortgage or paying your own? Because you've got to live somewhere regardless of if it's today or tomorrow. And so you might as well, you know, you might as well settle in on, on, on building your own equity instead of somebody else's. Because isn't that true? They've got to live somewhere, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I use that when I'm talking to people and it really does work. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, one thing I do want to say, if I may, right now, we are seeing a lot of for sale by owners going up on the market. Does anybody else notice that? You know, I'm signed up for um, Zillow alerts so that every time a FISBO gets listed in my market, I get notifications. You guys can do that too, because that's where people go. People go to Zillow, like it or not, that's where they go. And that's where all sellers go. And over the last couple of weeks, I've seen more FISBOs pop up than probably have in the entire last six months. So it's really interesting. There is so much opportunity for you guys to go out and get business right now, especially with those FISBOs. And right now is the time that they need us more than ever. I'm going to give you just a couple of scripts. Uh, I know we only have two minutes that will help you when you're on the phone with a FISBO. Okay. Will that be okay? Can I do that? All right. So this is such a simple script and, and, and it will get you the appointment. I promise. If it made financial sense to work with me, wouldn't it also make financial sense? I'm sorry. Hold on. Scratch that. I screwed up. Okay. Let me try again. Delete that, Anthony. Okay. We're going to try again. <laughs> okay. okay. So, Reset. If it made financial sense to work with me, wouldn't it also make sense for us to meet? You know, a lot of times, why are people doing for sale by owners? Why do they do it? They financial. Save the commission. Save no. commission. They, say they, they, they think they'll save money by not paying mm -hmm. a commission. And so if you can explain to them that it would make financial sense, or if it makes financial sense for us to work together, doesn't it make sense for us to meet? You know, how are they going to say no to that? Um, Here's the other script that's really good too. If, they, if you're on the phone with them and they're asking questions and, you know, for example, even if they're like, well, what's your commission? One of the questions that I, one of the things that I would pose back to them is I would say this, just by you asking that question proves that we should meet. 
So that's the script. Just by you asking that question proves that we should meet. Um, and guys, don't feel like you have to solve people's problems over the phone. Just set the appointment. Just make, have a mindset that you're going to get the appointment, whether that's through Zoom, wh whatever it is right now. Just make the appointment, okay? So hopefully that's helpful a little bit. I know we, we're out of time. I yeah, wanted to we can run chime in and book. say one thing before. Um, so that record, the recordation that I did, um, I don't know what you guys are doing on your spare time for exercise or whatever, but one thing I, I do is I actually listen to that on my way up the hill and I re and then I say it back to myself and I replay it, say it back to myself. That way it becomes natural like Josh. Josh is a natural at it because of his practice. Okay. Yeah, and right now, thank you, Anthony. And right now, that's what you have to be doing. Role playing, practicing, get your accountability partners and just get out there and crush it, guys. There is opportunity for those of you that are willing to work and willing to learn. And so um, compliments to you for just being here and, and crushing your business right now. That's awesome, Josh. Thank you again for sharing your time with us. I know how valuable it is. Ladies and gentlemen, please, you know, take, take heed in his, his advice, script and practice daily. That's the only way that you're going to become better at it. So thank you again, Josh. We appreciate you. We'd love to have you on again and jump on at any time, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have the best day. If you have any needs or something like that, send me a message, call me, text me. We're here for you. Thanks, Bye, Josh. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.